are starting to see more and more people like the, uh, the Tulsa uh, Opera push back against some of these bullying attempts. Really? Just in the news yesterday, a little bit here and there. And I don't know if it's so much corporate America, right? I mean, Chris Rufo, God bless Chris Rufo and his great reporting, but he had a report just yesterday about American Express and its critical race theory training of its employees. And it was just absurd what they're making people do. It's it's all the stuff that we've heard. Um, I It was basically they have to divide themselves into oppressor and oppressed. Uh, they've figured out where they are in the racial or sexual disparity scale and oppression scale. And then they they have to read certain books or follow certain podcasts that are going to help educate them on white supremacy in America, including one that says um, something like children are not colorblind. And it's I went and looked at it. It's all about how your baby six months out of the womb is already becoming a racist and needs an intervention. You need a little Robin D'Angelo for babies, I guess. Um, So anyway, but we are little by little seeing signs of hope, I think. And one of them yesterday came out of Loudoun County, you know, which has been sort of ground zero on teachers and parents trying to push back against critical race theory. We've seen angry clips out of school board um, meetings. By the way, there they just they just pushed through some uh, approval of transgender or just unisex bathrooms, I guess, allowing that to happen. So, you know, they, they it's not all going one way. But there was a Loudoun County teacher who showed up at a board meeting because she'd been told she wasn't allowed to really say how she felt. She says no dissent to the to the CRT training and messaging in the schools is allowed that she was told she's not allowed to even object to it. So this is a young woman. She shows up to speak to the board. Nobody else is there because given all the troubles there, they they took the covid problems as an excuse to say, oh, no, no one else can come. And she shows up in an empty room. With the board sitting there, somebody filmed it and said in part as follows. Listen. My name is Laura Morris. I have been a teacher in Loudoun County Public Schools for five years. This summer, I have struggled with the idea of returning to school, knowing that I'll be working yet again with a school division that, despite its shiny tech and flashy salary, promotes political ideologies that do not square with who I am as a believer in Christ. But within the last year, I was told in one of my so-called equity trainings that white, Christian, able-bodied females currently have the power in our schools and that, quote, this has to change. Clearly, you've made your point. You no longer value me or many other teachers you've employed in this county. School board, I quit. I quit your policies. I quit your trainings. And I quit being a cog in a machine that tells me to push highly politicized agendas on our most vulnerable constituents, the children. Wow. Mm. Fantastic. Listen, conservative philanthropists, where are you? Find that woman, create a school around her. There's others like her. We have to create alternative institutions. Uh, And, you know, she will be still standing. I'm sure she will be able to get a job. More people have to step forward and be willing to live through the Twitter mob. You know, in most cases, they can't take you down. On the other hand, you know, let's notice that there have been plenty of people who have been fired. James Bennett, you know, infamously from the New York Times editorial board for running an op-ed by Tom Cotton, calling for a federal response to the riots of 2020 that made black, apparently running that editorial made black employees at the at the New York Times feel unsafe. So yes, people have lost their jobs. There's no question about it. But at some point, if enough people stand up, uh, we are going to unmask this ideology. What really has to happen, Megan, though, right now, the only allowable explanation for socioeconomic disparities is bias. That is yeah. what's driving everything today in our culture. That's why everything is coming down is because, as you say, there is not 13 percent, 12 percent black representation at Sullivan and Cromwell law firm, at at Gibson Dunn Crutcher law firm, at, at Google, at Microsoft, because the average black 12th grader reads at the level of the average white eighth grader. The vast majority of of black eighth graders do not have even partial mastery of math and reading skills, a gap that does not close. There's a standard deviation uh, of of accomplishment on virtually every type of colorblind standardized objective test. And, And, but we're not allowed to talk about those gaps. We're not allowed to talk about the crime gap. Instead, any disparity, as you say, 
is chalked up to racism. And as, as long as that is the only explanation in the public sphere, the left wins. <laughs>